Hi, my name is Eddie Lopez, president and owner of Perform America in Texas. Uh, we're excited to be here to get to get today with the Vandergriff Wind Ensemble, uh, the director of bands, uh, Mike Howard, and artistic director of bands, Professor Jerry Jenkins from the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, this is a great opportunity just for these kids to be in front of uh, Professor Junkin, uh, the, the opportunity they've had to just rehearse such a fantastic piece. Uh, and we just want to uh, come together right now and chat a little bit about that journey and how special that piece is. Uh, so, uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and just talk about the journey of how it got here. Okay. Well, we, you know, we've been an honor to have recording this it's very well, which gave us the opportunity to kind of have a, a, a journey or a celebration of music. I actually, when I originally was programming the concert, it's not something I was considering uh, just because of the, the the length and gravity of the piece. Uh, this, I got a lot of nudges from a lot of different students uh, that really wanted to try and take it on. And I, I think they've done a wonderful job. We're really excited to perform it next week. Definitely. Uh, Professor Junkin, I know this piece is something special to you as it is. premiered this with the UT Win Ensemble. Uh, why don't you talk about that and your work with David Maslaka? And well, that, yeah, I, I've spoken about it before, obviously not in this setting, but he was a dear friend and I, I miss him greatly. And this year we'll be doing his 10th symphony which was in progress at the time that he finished but we've just we've sort of been doing both in dallas and here a retrospective of his works and um the, it's the music is so wonderful but yet this piece stands out to me just because we were involved in the commissioning of it and how how important this music is i think and in a way what a catalyst it was for the rest of his compositional career so i this is a, an amazing band so i i can hardly wait to get started so why are we talking yeah let's why go, we go right <laughs> into it, so. okay so do you mind if we just start from the beginning who's playing the horn solo here right over here okay so I, you're just gonna go i'll start conducting at 30 right okay Thank you. 
Thank you. Good. It, it's great. Uh, just a couple of things. One, uh, it, on the horn solo, you play it so beautifully. What's your name? Yeah, it's great. Uh, I think it's too slow. Can you play it faster? Just a little bit? Because if Mr. Mislenka were here, which he is, but if, if he were here, he would say that it just has to be simply stated. You know, so nothing, nothing fancy, no, nothing elaborate, just a beautiful, simple statement of this first theme. And you can take all the time you need as you get closer to, tw to 30, like you are with the breaths. That's all fine. But don't, don't worry about trying to let this be too expensive. Okay, then at 30, uh, the sound is great, I think. We, I think you're working too hard to play mezzo piano, though. It still needs to have a core to it. Can I just hear it? I would love a little bit more of the low clarinet color here. So let's just take it for a moment at 30. Ready? I could cost you not to delay. Deem, bum, ba, 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 bum. So this is going to be right in time. The next one, then, you know what I'm talking about when it speeds up? Can we do that speed up? Deem, ba, 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 bum. You know what I'm talking about, the next one? It seems like we hit a tempo and then don't really get faster. So let's just take it from 30. We're going to play for a bit. The accelerando is great. Here's 30. are dissipating in the clarinet. Ya -ba -ba, ya -ba -ba. Can you just sustain them more? So the whole thing has to sound like organ, even though organ hadn't played yet. You know, so it's got to be that sort of sustained sound. One more time. 30. I know I'm probably going faster here because everybody's wanting to play slower, but here, one, ba, da, dee, dum. Those have to be right in time. So please not slower. And we could use more second oboe. And everyone else who comes in with the ba, da, motto, let that come through a little bit. Could we take it, please, from 46? 46. And just for our uh, the people who are tuning in, uh, we, we won't have harp today, and obviously a, a few things which will be added on, but uh, w they do know that there's a harp part here, <laughs> trust us. Uh, so this is 46, ready? <sighs> Trombones, can you sustain a little bit more than you are in bar 58? And then more, much more. Let the glissando come out. And that should take the entire beat, so it's not a quick gliss. Thank you. 55. No, sorry. Let's do it from 50. That would make more sense. I'm still uh, thinking that the first note that the second oboe plays is just too long. Here's 50. <sighs>
Now, at 62, are you going to have an organ? We'll have a synthesized organ. Okay, but yep. in San Antonio, you'll have yes, it. Yes, okay. absolutely. So, uh, just something to know about this. So even when it's synthesizer or an electric organ or whatever, certainly when it's pipe organ, any of you ever played with an organ in church, you know, or at some point, it's always flat. So, especially to wind instruments, just because as we play, our sound goes up, you know, the intonation gets a little higher. So we're going to have to work anytime the organ is playing to lower your pitch, to keep your pitch down rather than letting it get too sharp. Or else there are moments when the organ is heard and it's like really disconcerting. So just to be aware of that, and this is a big moment at 63 when the organ first makes its big appearance. So let's take it at 63, please. This section, I don't have to tell you this, from 88 through 107 is like one of the more difficult parts of the piece. Just to make this sound light and bubbly like he wanted it to, and the flute thing, which is so awkward, you know, but to make that sound as light as it needs to be. And part of the issue, I think, are the bassoons always in this. Um, can I just, just, let me just hear the bassoons for a moment at 88. Good. Can you make more, let's say it this way, less of the unaccented notes? Beep, 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 that sort of sound. Yeah, so there's a lot on the point of one and three, and not so much these upbeats. And then, can I hear no bassoon, but everyone else? Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. <laughs> Yeah. And can you do the same except with 16ths that the bassoons are doing? So I know you're trying, but bigoted, bigoted, bigoted. It's almost like the last 16th is totally thrown away. Bigoted, bigoted, bigoted. But if the last 16th doesn't speak, no harm. But what we have to have, I think, is a little energy filled diminuendo on each one of these. Bigoted, bigoted. So can we just try this? Everyone now with bassoons also doing what you just did at 88. Good, thank you. And the last thing to the flute, because I know you're working so hard to play every note. The first note of each group is the important one. And then, again, just a quick diminuendo. If, you know, if they don't speak, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. But it's a little too that we're hearing now. If you can do that, that would be great. Can we just try it again? From 88, same people, which is everyone. Here's 88. And we may go on. You never know. Here's 88.
the bass drum needs to be louder. If Mr. Meslenka were here, he would be saying, this needs to sound like the Diaz era from the Verdi Requiem. Da 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 wham, da da wham, da 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 wham. So don't hold back. This isn't UIL, so you don't have to worry about getting a one here. So just all we need to think about is the music, which is a nice <laughs> thing, right? So can we just take it where, where this crazy stuff starts at 15? Here we go, back to 115, 115. First time that begins. about this it's all going so well however at 154 5 6 and 7 I think it needs to have a real feeling of being in one to the bar here yum dum so could you play the unaccented notes maybe a little bit less the accent is fine it's just that it all sounds the same dynamic to me then 155 you're doing exactly what it says, but what it says here isn't exactly what he wanted. <laughs> so trombones, can you make a decay, even though there's not a diminuendo written? Um, bang, um, bang, um, bang. So your sustained notes come down a little bit because what he really wanted were to hear the dong dong be dong da be dong ba ba. He wanted to hear the chord moving through this. So I think if you guys are too strong all the way through, and let's say the same is true with trumpet that you make the attack, but then uh, a little bit, maybe one dynamics worth of diminuendo. Okay, can we try this again from the Verdi Requiem business? 141. Here we go, 141. <laughs> And that was much better, by the way, we didn't even talk about it, but 164 through 168, that was terrific. 169, however, can that be softer? So that that really is a piano. Bass clarinet, sort of most especially here, a real piano, if you could, when we get to bar 169. Can we do just the ending of this from one, no, 158? That was so much better, thank you, trombone. So can we keep it like that? Here's 158. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so bass drum, I think we could use a little bit more of your crescendo. Cole, are you actually Cole? Or percussion names on stands, that's, I know people have to move around, so sometimes that doesn't work. Good. And then uh, there's not usually a lot of uh, dynamic control on the lion's roar, but could it be softer to begin with? I think you can start it softer, even though it's not a crescendo mark, and then let it crescendo and then go back down in the second bar. Good. Now, just a few little things that we should take another run at. The piano, when you come in, bar 193, that can be a little stronger, I think. Uh, let's just take it from where this scherzo material begins at 177. So this has to sound like a you know a gerbil released across the heads of the drum here you know so can you be softer actually maybe a little the shape that you're doing is fine just start at one dynamic less one more time 177 And then clarinets, uh, it's, it's, again, everything, we just don't have time for me to keep telling you that it sounds good, but it sounds really good. So every time we stop, just insert the words, it sounds really good, but, comma. And then I'll just say what it, and if it doesn't sound good, I'll tell you it doesn't sound good, okay? But it sounds great. But clarinets, you'll notice that what you're doing, the last dynamic that you had was a diminuendo going into the downbeat of 220. So this shouldn't be so strong when you come in at 223. It's all part of a diminuendo that started before you came in here. Good. Um, percussion, you guys are doing great. Can you just take it from the organ chord 211? This big C minor triad. So here's 211. Before Mr. Meslenka wrote this piece, in his previous symphony, he had by his own words, he had rediscovered the C major scale. So there's a lot of C major in this piece, and here it happens to be C minor. He just added a flat you know, to this section. But the overall thought of this music is still in C. So let's take it at uh, 211. <laughs> Drum one bar late. Good, thank you. Uh, bar 234, and this next section is so fantastically important and treacherous. And um, what are all the words that mean you have to think? <laughs> you cannot go on autopilot through this. Because if your mind wanders just for the slightest moment, you're on that big stage in San Antonio, and you're trying to find your relatives out in the house, you know, and the lights are in your eye. And I wonder really if there are as many people here as it seems, and then you're lost. So, and the wheels in, on this piece, they don't even wobble, they just go if, if you're not concentrating. So, and this is a spot where everyone has to be thinking when we get the 234, whether you play or not, 
you have to be saying one, two, three. So that we're ready to come in in the right place. Particularly, obviously, the woodwinds, the soloists, the saxophone, the clarinets, the E-flight clarinet, bassoons, at all. So can we just take this right on 234 for a moment? And the issue is I hear it. I think you can do this. I think you can start it softer. I think you're playing it a little safe at the beginning with the dynamic. So can you really try for a pianissimo and try to not shove the two eighth notes together? So we get It's a fantastic moment if we can do it. So let's try it once at 234, right on it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, good. Vibraphone, can you do exactly what you're doing, but like one dynamic less? Okay. Mallet is fine, I think, just a little bit less. 234 again. <laughs> we're sort of missing E flat clarinet in the right. Who's playing E flat clarinet? Okay. 234, we're beginning. Once again. <laughs> Just for my clarification, are all of these solos at 234? Are we doing one player per part on each of the bit up saxophones as well? If that's the case, then saxophones, can you play the same size note but just softer? So it's a little, it sounds bigger than everybody else. So just a little, a little softer, but still staccato. Can we try it again, 234? Yeah, all right, can you do this again? Can I just hear the bassoons for a moment? 234. <laughs> yes, thank you. Is there any way to just check the pitch on the C? Okay, because especially in relation to first bassoon, which is a little sharp, and then your C is not. So it's just two of you can get together and work that out. Can we take it again from 234? Everyone, two, two. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. Uh, so I wouldn't be doing my job here if I didn't point out that every once in a while there's just, it's really close. It's just, it's so close. But close is terrible, right? So, I mean, unless it's exactly right, then it just, it kind of comes off with everybody saying, oh, that was, that was lovely, that was a nice try, rather than going, wow, and that's what this section should do, you know, this should just be like magic. So can we, we've got to, maybe the problem is we're, we don't, we're not playing enough to get into it, so can we take it back from 216, dum, dum, ba, da, 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 Fascinating though your part is, oboes, clarinets, trumpets, and trombones, and horns, we really want to hear more of ba da ba da 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 ba da 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 So, is there any way, yet that 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 could be a little less. <laughs> so just, I know it's very exciting, everybody wants to get into the action here. But just a little bit less. Piano, you don't change anything. Timpani, I think you're fine. Even the color from the xylophone, it's, it's just the winds, I think, that are too strong in the repeated quarters there. Can we just take, oh man, okay. So 243, is it possible? This is a place where I'm not sure why he wrote it this way. I, well, I know why he did, but I'm not sure it's the best thing to do. So in saxophones, 
Can you both play? Are you already going da 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 instead of da 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 da? Are you alternating? Could you just both play all of that? So we get the crescendo. And also it relieves a little bit of the stress to you know come in in exactly the right place. So just starting on beat two of 243, play every beat, and then you already have it in 247 and 248 anyway. So just do what you have in 247 and 248. Then in the trumpets, I kind of think it's the same thing for you guys, 245, starting on beat three. Why don't you just, both parts just play the same thing, first and second. You know what I mean? That way, because that's at the moment that we need the crescendo anyway, and we, I like to hear these duples. Xylophone, you could actually give us slightly more crescendo going into 249. Good. Can we just do this from, let's say, 243? Right where we're going to start doubling in the saxes. Here's 243. Uh, uh. Yeah. But can you keep it staccato? It now feels like you're playing longer notes. And just the two players. Okay, so let's not add the entire section just yet. Let's save that for 249. Okay? Stand. Sounds really good, but uh, in 290, in 291, is it possible to get more from you guys? <laughs> On that music. That's a big bravura moment for horns there. So there, you do not try to balance with anything. You guys are leading the sound, actually. We could never give him enough horn there. Uh, we don't need to go through this previous section because I want to save the chops so that when we get to the end, we have enough uh, left. But let's, sorry, I don't think there's a good place to start other than 287. <coughs> Thank you, here's 287. So for our audience that is watching the webcast and tuning in, it's very easy, I don't want you to take this wrong, but it's very easy to lose sight of the fact that this is a high school band because they sound so amazing. So here's 287, ready? Now, so my job today is to like go like this and put the rib spreader in and pull you apart. And then tomorrow, Mr. Howard comes back, puts band-aids on everything, gets you all fixed. <laughs> but I would just tell you that horns, he'll know how much is too much here, but it needs to be three times more than what you just played. So not just a little bit. So that's, and you need to tongue harder. You need to play this in a way that usually your teacher tells you not to play. This has to be really brassy and strong. You know what quiver it means? <laughs> this, this, we need a little of that here. Can we take it again, 287? <laughs> Once again, it's really good. Thank you for the bassoons. And like it says, strict tempo. So it's, I have the feeling that you're wanting to slow down here just a little bit. Don't do that. Don't eat up, eat up, eat. Just in perfect time. And then 
Do all of you have written into your music at 305 the word freeze with an exclamation mark? Could you write that in? So no one move. There should be real tension in the room right here because everyone is just absolutely still. This is not the place to swab, blow spit out of your instrument, turn pages, anything. It's just nothing except bop, beep, bop, beep, bop, beep. And then you can relax a little at 314. Which I have to say sounds like something other than one in three of a 3-4 bar. It's like it's some other rhythm. We're sort of getting a hybrid. Some sum sum bum thing going. So can we try this again? And would you just mentally subdivide into three here? Whether Mr. Howard's in one or in three, however, whichever way he does it, just you subdivide in three and we'll get it. Can we take it from 301? Strong first note in each of these bars before you make the diminuendo. <coughs> And then oboes. What I would like for you to do at 309. Do we ha how many oboes do we have? Just two. Two. Okay, so is anyone playing the low D? But I can add a, I can add a muted trumpet on yeah, it. Yeah, I think that would be good because I, I th we're missing that low D. So, okay, great. Thank you. Let's just take it at 309. Oh, here we go. Oh, Canada. No, it's wrong. <laughs> 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 The last note, a D. <coughs> Is that right? Yes, the last note, a D. Your D. Concert C. Yeah. With the kick slide. Because <laughs> you got the mute in. It really is true what they say about those Ds. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's just take this. Let's do the same place, if we could, from 301. <coughs> do you want to try that this time in the trumpet? OK, here's 301. Thank you. The last two notes that you play in the E flat clarinet, could you keep them still the same length note as you were before? So they're staccato. One, de, de, wah. And then it all changes at 334. Then it's very broad, obviously. Good. Um, this was better that time. Thank you. That the low D helps a great deal. It always, it's weird, isn't it, how 309 always something doesn't speak. Something is always weird about that first note. So oboes, could you do me a favor? When we get to 309, when you see it coming, you have four bars there. I'd like for you to reach up and just gently squeeze the sides of your reed. 
seriously, just to make sure that it's going to open on the first note. Because it, um, bop, 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 we have to have that there from the beginning. Okay, I'm going to trust you about that. Could you write that into your music, please? Thank you. Let's take it from 314, and then we'll get into the next music. Here's 314. It's the same length note, but can it be more gentle in the clarinets? Like you were trying to find a smaller contact spot for your tongue? B, 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 B. It feels a little heavy. Be nice if it could be lighter. Once again, 314 from the downbeat. So, uh, I, I know you don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but a couple of things. I'll just react to it. Again, it sounds really good when the clarinets come in at 346. Can you place that a little softer? It feels obvious to me. It should just be a beautiful cloud of sound. And then when the saxophones take over, it should be the same thing. We, it's just a color change, that's all. And it feels a little obvious that all of a sudden, it, because of the crescendo that you make, I, I think it's, there's going to be, it, don't worry about a crescendo, just play. And then seconds, soft as the first. So same thing for Barry, same thing for Tanner. Just as you add on, no one make a crescendo there. So very, very soft. Then horn, when you re-enter in three, five, two, it is. Uh, first horn, you can you don't have to play the impossibly soft dynamic level here. Your first note that we should hear that uh, euphonium and tuba with harp, left hand and piano. You could make these dom, bam, bam, a little starred each the attack. So don't make it too legato. In other words, here and let the piano color that sound. Piano and harp will give the articulation for all of that. One thing, uh, Mr. Howard, I would say, yeah. in this section with, uh, when Mallory is here, just, you just let her play and don't worry about that holding back in tempo thing. Just, just go through all that and okay. she'll be great because it gets a little fussy, I think, with this slow down, speed up, all the notes that he has here. Okay. And I think he really just wrote that in there for the harpist anyway. So, and she can play it pretty much in time, so it'll, it'll all work out. So can we just do this again from, maybe where the, where the horn solo, the little, this first recap starts in 334. There we go, 334. Yeah, thank you, one more time. Just so we can get that A in there.
Good, thank you, sorry. Let me just stop for a couple of things. Again, it's very beautiful, but this is all nature music at 360. So this will drive you nuts, Zach, but if Mr. Meslinker were here, he would say, don't, don't worry about the exact rhythm here. Just play, so, and, and it should be, it should sound free. He tried to write some rubato into it, but you can play, and if you take a little longer than one beat, no problem. So the important thing is just that this all sounds free in this section. Alto flute, this is always a challenge here to get the pitch up, you know, so just, just know that you're gonna have to aim high there. You have to do all the flute things, you know, roll out, point your toes, raise your eyebrows, head up, every, everything possible to keep the pitch up there. Uh, oboe, can this be really precise? And then xylophone a little too fast, I think, when we start. Maybe I'm just going slower. I don't know. But let's, can we just try this right from 360? This has to be like uh, you were sitting out by a pond somewhere and we're seeing these, this bubble that appears, you know, and spreads out and you're contemplating the universe from that. That's kind of what this music is here. So here we go. This is right on 360. Thank you. Sorry. Can you just make it? Don't worry about getting through it so fast. One more time. So Drew it is, right? So it's, it's beautiful. At 373 though, however, can you s make sure that that's a clear start to the second C? Otherwise it sounds like it's just all tied together. This is uh, 272, bravo on the trumpet. This is, th sorry, 372, 372. So wonderful. Uh, there's just a few little things. One, trumpet two. It sounds so good, but the sound being bigger than piccolo, I think you need to play a hair softer. But could both of you make a quicker diminuendo on You know where I'm talking about, March, uh, 383. And then the same thing really in 384. On those octaves. Uh, but this is all going great. Is it possible, Zach, just a little more quick crescendo diminuendo on 380? So that that just sort of comes out of nowhere. And then you can, it's almost like you throw away the end of it. It doesn't, if, it, if the last note doesn't speak, it's not a huge thing there. Marimba, uh, who's playing marimba? Yeah, so a quick crescendo, if you would, that That seems like it's just two notes and it's not important, but it's vitally important in 380. Uh, let's start at the same place, which I think was 372, wasn't it? Can we do 372 again? 
And again, the flute is lovely. But the same thing, whenever you have a repeated note, uh, if you could make sure, like 382, 383, 380, all those, just so that each one is clear. You know, so we have the, the real tune there. Okay, once again, 372. Excellent. Okay, good. Saxophones. I know it's marked piano, and you're doing exactly that, but it needs to be a warmer sound here. So, uh, with more body. So, I think a, a little bit more, actually, tenor and very sustained would be nice here. And then I could use, it is a solo, so the trombone one, a little bit more from the E, and three, nine, seven, just to, you know, you can just up that one full dynamic, so that you're the strongest thing there. It should not balance with the bassoons. You should be leading the sound. Good, and then um, it's interesting because you, you did it so well. Thank you for this in the trumpet, but 393, even though you have mezzo forte, mezzo piano, I think that one needs to be a little bit more, believe it or not. Big dig dig dig, just to finish it because I missed the last octave, but all of the rest of it sounds so great. So, can we just take it from 391, please? Zappy bum, zappy bum in the saxophones. Here's 391. Thank you. Good. Can you change, do you have enough time in four beats, there are three beats to change sticks there? I think that's too clicky, you know, that last one. And it's not the way you're playing it. I think just something more medium rather than quite so hard there. The last one you play in 397, okay? Uh, and by the way, while we're on it, in the xylophone, it all sounds really great. However, the one moment where I'd like to hear it to be more present is 388. We won't go back for that right now, but big it up, 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 that place. Just a, just a little bit more with the same mallet you're using, and that'll be fine. Okay, thank you. Now, can we take it from, uh, so that the trumpets don't have to do this again. Let's do it at 394, please. Here's 394. And that last time, that was great. stronger with those and I think it'll work. Now saxes, much better trombone, thank you.
thank you. Good. So, oh, it's, this is great. And I know you like playing this part of the piece, so um, we're not going to over-rehearse this by any stretch. It's all great. One small detail in bar 418. Can you, can everyone wait until the fourth beat to make the crescendo? It seems like people are making it early there. He actually was quite clear that he only wants that to be on the fourth beat. So it's a thrust to the release there. It goes into a bucket of bum, 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 bum. So it, do you all know why this is in this piece? Why this music is here? Yeah, yeah, Christopher, you know. Yes, yeah, when which his, his uh, you know, casket was brought by train to Springfield, and so there were these mountains, these hills around, and there was a brass band playing this, and so as the band would play, the sound would echo, you know, from these hills, and, uh, you know, amaz hundreds of thousands of people had lined up to pass through and, you know, see the casket after his assassination. So that's why, he, and at the time Mr. Meslenka was reading this, he was quite fascinated with Lincoln, and particularly he was reading Carl Sandburg's biography of Lincoln, in which there's a really beautifully descriptive section about that event. So that's where all of this came from. Um, now, let's do this next little section, where I have notes in my score at 273, where it says, David says slower. So he wanted this to be quite drawn out, all these fermatas. So can we just take it at, uh, this is 423, from the downbeat. <laughs> Yeah, so the way I'll do it is I'll give you each one of these. So I'll give you one, two, we hang out for a while. Three, and that's where you do your thing, four. And then after that, every beat has a fermata, okay? So here's 240, sorry, 423. One, two. Thank you. So just, I would say don't wait for Mr. Howard to cue you there. You just play it after her E starts to, starts to sound. So she goes G, E, shikatum. Because that's with nothing else, really. It looks like it's with the bowed marimba, but it's really not. So can we just do that second bar? This is 424. pitch. Yes. It's sounding a D. It should be an E, right? It's really a flat E. Is that, is that? Yeah. Can we try it from two, 425? Here we go, 425. Now, you're striking it after you begin to bow it. You should strike it as you bow it because it'll actually help it to vibrate earlier. Bing, and then you're already going. Bing, rather than bing, bing. Can we try it that way? Sorry, 425.
So a couple of things with this. One, the horns and the euphoniums, can you make a larger crescendo and then sustain the downbeat forte? It sounds a little anticlimactic at 427. So, is Kazumi here? There he is. Uh, so, I, do, you ha do you have rosin on the bow? And then, I don't suppose you have put rosin on the edge of the bar, have you? Do that on the C, E, and G. And I promise it'll help. I promise it will help. <laughs> so, we have this discussion all the time. And no one believes me about this, but it does help. So can we take this at 426? Just do the last bar of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and right on the edge where it's going to grip, too. Make sure you're on the top of it. Perfect. OK. So here's just the last bar, 426. You know what? We should do 425. Let's do both of them so we can get this. 425. I don't know why the Kotali starts so flat and then goes to E. Some bum bum bum, yugga down. Okay. Uh, 427. Ah, we gotta keep going. Here's 427. We're almost halfway through the piece. Here we go, 427. <laughs> I say stretch that a little bit. Dum bum bum da, yatta down. Like that. So we'll just, beats two and three will be out of tempo. It's okay. Here we go, 427. So I wish he wouldn't have said no diminuendo because as soon as the word diminuendo appears, it puts into mind that we should be making a diminuendo there. But in fact, there should be a crescendo, I think, to make it sound like there's no diminuendo. Because right now, I'll be honest, to me, it's something like there's a diminuendo. So if you can try to please sustain, and if anything, you can add a little energy to it, but you can't subtract any. Now, there is a rule, as you probably well know, in orchestral playing, which says, for the brass, you never start a note louder than you're going to be able to finish it in a place like this. So please don't give up all your sound in the first two seconds, and then we just don't have anything left. So if you need to play softer at the beginning to be able to maintain the energy, that's fine here, because it's so doubled. Can we take it at 440? Better be, better be, that bar. Here's 440. <sighs> Our tempo elevator isn't all on the same floor here. It's a little wobbly. So just make sure in the trumpets, yum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, that it just keeps going straight ahead. Clarinets, um, is it possible that you play not quite so separated, actually? D, B, 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 B. Firm articulation, but I'm feeling the quarters a little shortened. D, 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 B, 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 B. A little more like that, I think, would help. Here's 
it possible to get more second flute, particularly in really throughout that whole thing when you're in octaves? When you come in with the A, just because you're hidden back there a little bit on the second row, so his sounds naturally going to come out more. So just give us a little bit more from the A, and then especially four six seven four six eight. Three people in the whole audience will get this, but Mr. Meslenka is quoting himself there. That's a, this is a different piece of music that the second flute is playing. You're playing a child's garden of dreams there. So um, it's great if you can bring that out. So can we take this at four, five, six? Yeah, I think that would be good. So, so this is all better, I think. Here's four, five, six. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Yeah, four, five, six. So second and third trombones can't be laid there. Dom, bom, bom, bom. And that can be a little bit more punctuated, I think. A real forte. Great. 470 is fine. Let's do 469 just so we can get the bom, bom in there. Here's 469. 469. Can you actually give us more sound in 499 and 500? Before that, I think it's just fine. But it's just that last, those last two bars to finish it off with like a crescendo going to the th through the third beat of 500. Terrific. Nice E concert, too. Gongs. Uh, we could use more gongs at 497, 498. Let's take it from, there's no good place here, so I guess we can't start. Let's do it at 489. That's as good a place as any, I think. 489. <laughs> together in the bassoon and horns here. So can you hear the horn from where you're sitting? Okay, so just put it with them. Don't try to lead them because they cannot hear you. So if anyone's going to have to compromise, you will have to compromise with the horns there. Can I just hear that for a moment? Uh, piano, horns, and bassoons, one bar before this metric modulation. So this is 502. Only horn. 
horns and no sax, no bass clarinet. Good. So in the horn, if you can keep it like it says crisp and dry throughout, because it loses some of its crispness and dryness after about two or three bars of this. So it's really hard, I realize, but to keep it, it's easier for the bassoon. But because of that, you might press the tempo bassoon. So just be sure that you're listening back to the horns here. Thank you. This is everyone from 501. You don't need to play the first note. Here's 501. Ready? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, good. So, Horn, what dynamic do you have at 529? Should be mezzo forte. Again, I, this is a change that he made later on. He regretted saying piano here. So, definitely mezzo forte, if not forte, actually, when you come in. Now, so this, uh, do you know what's going on here in the saxophone? You know what uh, you're supposed to sound like here? Okay, so do you know any of these... Uh, Schubert songs, cycles like Winterreise or uh, any of those pieces. Okay, so you have an assignment because you can download this in, on your phone before you get to the next class. Is, uh, so you need to look, listen to, by tomorrow, these recordings by Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, who's the singer, and Gerald Moore, who's the pianist. So, and listen to them sing Anything by Schubert, Winterreise or Schwanengesang, those are, those are all long, I'll write it down for you. <laughs> those, are, uh, uh, those are all long song cycles, but you can listen to about, yeah, I mean, but that's what's going on here. That's what he wanted. And so you've got to be uh, Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, who is like the greatest German art song singer ever. So that's what he wants here. Because right now it sounds like you are a lovely saxophonist, but it doesn't sound like Dietrich Fischer Dieskau, and you guys don't sound like Gerald Moore. So somehow we need to, you know, get a little bit more into the spirit of what he was going for here. So he, uh, when, when we did this for the first time, the gentleman who was playing alto saxophone is Todd Yukimoto, who's now the um, saxophone professor at the University of Hawaii, plays in the Royal Hawaiian Band. Great. I mean, he was a terrific player. And so he, um, he asked Mr. Meslenka, so what are you going for here? And so he told him exactly that, you know, Dietrich Fischer Dieskau singing Schubert, accompanied by Gerald Moore. That's it. So he, and back in those days, there were actually record stores, so he went over on the drag and bought this big set, you know, of all of the Schubert songs, Winterreise and Schwanengesang, et cetera. And he said he listened to them like nonstop for the next two days before the next rehearsal. And then at the next rehearsal, he played it. And so he asked him at the end, so I, he, I said, I listened to all these. Was that more what you were thinking? And Mr. Meslenka said, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's, that's what he wants here. So you, if you listen to just a few minutes, you'll get it. But if you listen to it for hours, then you'll really get it, OK? And you've got time to do that. What else were you going to do today? Here we go. This is 501. <laughs> 501, everyone. So here's what I want this time. I just want you to be wildly expressive. I don't want you to play the saxophone. I want you to be a musician. Okay, so don't worry about, oh, if I do this, and then I've got to lower this, and I've got to, and then the umbers, forget all of that stuff and just play beautifully. Okay, 501.
Okay, thank you. Now, right here, this is such a crucial moment to Mr. Meslenka. So can you make more crescendo at 524, but then drop it to absolutely nothing? If it didn't speak, that would be better than playing it too loud there. So this somehow has to be a little more magical. Can we take it at 520, everyone, please? 520. That's it. Uh, so at 5.45, starting in the middle of the bar, for the next bar and a half, horns, can you make a big crescendo? <laughs> and then it stays strong at 5.47. I have that written in with Mr. Meslenka's initials by it, so evidently that's something he wanted here. So can we take it at uh, 5... Hmm. That's fine. In the horn, if you could just, as you practice this, be more clear with the articulation in 539, the 16th. D, do, ya, do, ya. It tends to be a little flippant right now. The, it sounds great. So just a little bit more there. So let's just take it from your last note. This is 542. Everyone, please. Beautiful. 542. <laughs> So saxophones, you have to be in time here, not behind the beat. Now, also, you, there should be accents in both alto sax and tenor sax in 548. Do you have those? Okay, great. Can we just take it from the place where there was a crescendo that was supposed to happen, but it wasn't obvious enough in 545? That place. Here's 545. Without slowing down. Yeah, you're one beat behind us in the piano. And that's crucial because it has to go in alternation with the double bass part. And you know in the bass clarinet to listen to the double bass here when they arrive. Okay, can we just do from uh, 561? We won't do all of that, so I know some of this is just you getting used to me. So, uh, 561, right on it, where it goes back into four. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Last bar, can you make a diminuendo going into 570, which I realize it doesn't say, but so it's really a shock when the horns come in there. Okay, here's 570. <laughs> What it looks like, can you make this lighter? All of these, ba, 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 ha, 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 like that. So it's a light sound rather than bludgeoned feeling. 
But horns, all of your fancy stuff, that should obviously come out. 570 again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seven, nine, no crescendo, please, until beat three. Some people are making it early, but it shouldn't happen until beat three there, so that that way we can hear. Otherwise, the bassoon bass clarinet music is going to get obscured. Five, seven, six, please. Five, seven, six. Ready? All right. <clears throat> We'll pick it up again. I'm not going to go through this again because I have a feeling that I'm going a slightly different tempo and that's throwing the precision of this off just a little bit. As I'm hearing it, it feels that in general, the drums are tuned higher than I am accustomed to hear. Sorry, are tuned lower than I'm accustomed to hearing them here because I think it's not giving us the clarity that would be nice to have. So I'm wondering if it's possible that we could think of just cranking those up a little bit, pitch-wise. Um, I think it would just help the clarity of ding -ding 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 which we're losing just a little bit. And again, part of that may be just the difference in tempo. So can we just take it at 606, please? I'd like to keep going. We're going to make it. Here's 606. <laughs> One, four. Does it say legato in your music here, horns? Marcado. Yes, that's exactly right. Marcado, almost staccato. So it's really clear. Now, trumpets somehow, are you doing this with your bells up, the 16th notes at 611 and 612? Mm -hmm. I think you should. Yeah, just, I'm talking about only the 16th. The sustained music, that's fine. But it's ba -ba -da -da -da, ba -da 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 -da, so we hear the two runs more clearly there. Because I know you're playing it, but I'm not getting the full impact of that. So can we just pick it up at 606 again? Good, here we go, 606. It was so nice of you to put this tray here for me to put my water on. Thank you. Here we go, 606. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
I should ask, is that faster than you usually go here? <laughs> okay, sorry, that's okay, I can adjust, that's fine. Because if you were doing it at that temple, I was gonna say, you, that may be the first time in history it's ever been done at that temple. <laughs> because every time I've ever done it, that's been my goal, because that's what he wanted, but it's just impossible. It, it's, it, is, it doesn't matter who's playing it. It's never been played that, at that temple that he wanted it. <sighs> so I have a couple of notes written into my music at 628. Uh, one of which it says, be cool. And then like around 631, 632, it says, stay cool. <laughs> because I have a tendency to want to push it there anyway. But the player, it can get so frantic. Everybody just has to be cool. Okay, just dum ba ba da ga da ga da da ba ba da ba ba ga da da ga da da um ba da ba ba ga da da ga da da ba da ba da 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 ba ba da ga da ga da da just be cool here. Don't you can't play this music in a frantic way. I think so. Can we just take it, um, making our little tempo compromise here at six twenty eight. So if we did this, so ba ga da ga da ga da da ba ga da da, would that be okay? Okay, here we go. Six twenty eight. I know you have worked on this ad nauseum, right? You know, to try to, and it sounds really good. Could you make in 684 more crescendo on the fourth beat going to 685? Again, it's not written into the music, but I think everybody's feeling it. So, and then the same thing, which almost every, it seems like a lot of people are breathing on beat four. 686 going to 687, but that needs some energy. So breathe somewhere else. So both fourth beats, 684, 686, I think should have a crescendo. Good. Can we just do it from 697 in the interest of time? 679. So sorry, my dyslexia has kicked in again. 679. Thank you. 
Thank you. Beautiful. Now, just a couple of small things. This delicate music at three, sorry, 693. Uh, I think this needs to be more skewed toward the flutes and not the clarinet so much. So I, if it were me, I would cut the number of players because I don't think it's a quality thing at all. I just think it's a balance issue here. So this might be something you might consider trimming this to one player per part in the clarinets at 693. Um, and this is all, th this all works really well. Xylophone, I think it's probably three dynamics too loud at 697. It's only piano there. Sounds like the Creston Xylophone Concerto all of a sudden. So just a little bit less, if you would. I think so. Yeah, and see if we can make that color match. You want to try that once? And just yeah, see let's see what works. Clarinet. So at just six, one nine, per part four. clarinet, one per part flute. Yeah. But clarinets, try to keep the flute sound in your ear here. Okay. So six, six, nine, three. Ready? Good. Thank you. And then maybe just a hair more of the vibraphone here, just to mix with the flute color. Okay, but th I think that'll work. We could do that a few more times. Now let's let's get into this baby section at 712. Here we go. And this is so beautiful, this section, especially with the harp. Yeah. I know you, you guys are used to doing it at the right tempo, but I'd like to do it a little faster. I like that. Let's try it. Thank you. That last G sharp, can you delay just ever so slightly? Second flute, Z, ah, like that. Let's try it again. And I'm sure we're going to pace these things differently. The way I'll do it for today is I'm just going to give you four really slow beats in each of these bars, and you'll just gauge. It's like you were graphic notation. So you're just going to gauge where you are with the beats. Great. We're going to do this again, same place. And then we'll go on. The flute. I'm not sure uh, what we're doing there. Here's uh, 715 right on it. 715. Yeah, so D, Z, D, da. Here we go. Once again, 715. Thank you. Yeah. So here, uh, second clarinet is vitally important. So we hear the suspension. Who's doing second clarinet? Okay. So yeah, that those pitches are really important there. Now, so all of you know what's going on here in the music. You know, so this is Mr. Meslenka could never really talk about this part of the piece without getting pretty emotional about it. 
So these are babies who never had the opportunity to be born. So, you know, it should not be loud at all. It should be as soft as possible. This, what starts out crying and then later becomes singing, you know, with this chorale. So can we just try it at 7.15, picking it up one more time at 7.15? Yet, wait. Third clarinet, we've got to have you here. Here's 718. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm conducting that differently, this 2-4 bar. So are you conducting all the eights? Or? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So let's just go on in 721. We won't worry about that. Here's 721. But you guys are messing with the horns too much here. The horns and the euphoniums, tenor saxophone, we have to hear that line more than anything else. So could you keep the crescendo in 739 under their level and let them bring the crescendo up? Okay, so about the previous section, it's all going to be fine. I think we could use more of the babies at 729, however, when you start really singing along with the whole thing. I'm not going to worry about the uh, other part. It's going to be very beautiful because um, Mr. Howard has this worked out in a way that I don't want to mess with because it's all good. Timpani, could you start the roll on the E softer, but then really keep it a steady crescendo all the way to the downbeat? Can, as a matter of fact, can we do that? This is beat three of 731. about with the organ because it now sounds flat to us because everybody is you know it's been a two-hour rehearsal and so the pitch is getting higher so just a reminder to keep your pitch down please uh, good we're just gonna go on from there in the interest of time here's 742 <coughs> hmm? sorry yeah 742 
tubas, are you cheating there? And taking that down an octave at 761? Yes. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody has, a, nobody has a high C that you can count on? No. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> How, Mr. Howard will uh, determine that. <laughs> However, I think it might be worth how many you full moons? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. So it might be worth putting okay. a you So this is what we get. The, it sounds odd to me to go ba da ba da da. Got it. Of, -de -de. So you could have euphonium do the first okay. two notes or something. So anyway, we can experiment with that. Okay. Seven five four. And I know the 767, 768 are getting ready to be a mess because we're going to do this differently. So, but just play. Just do what you do. So this is everyone, 754. <laughs> Highest pitch gong to bar 802, one bar earlier than indicated, and then you just play the part from then on. I don't know why you didn't put that in there. And then chimes, who's putting chimes? Can you give us a little bit more? Okay. Uh, you don't play this piece to play soft, you know, <laughs> especially at this at this moment. Uh, however, trombones, the same issue that we talked about, about sustaining, we're losing the sound too much. So can you do um, bim, bim, bam, bam. Don't just wrap your legs around the chair and blow. It doesn't have to overwhelm everybody. It's going to be strong because of the doubling. So can we just take everyone at, ah, yum, ba, 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 bam, 798. These three bars work so great. And I always told David, why are they, why, what is this, why is this here? But somehow it works. And he would always go, I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. This is 798. Ready? <laughs> Could you be really mindful of your releases uh, starting at 829? And you can make the, uh, them fairly aggressive. Dump it up. Because it seems like it, the farther we go, it gets a little later. And that, that would be not good. So it has to be right in time for this to be so effective. Thank you. Can we just take it at 837?
also quoting himself here. This is right out of his third symphony in which he was describing the mountain vistas of where he lives, you know, and lived was Montana. So this has got to be wide open here. Ba -be -ba. So a little broad. Can we just take it at um, probably the best place here is 860 because everyone has that as a rehearsal letter, correct? Here's eight. Do you not have it? Can you find it? Yes. Okay, here's 860. <laughs> time we have left trying to think of the best use of our time I, I can make some general comments and it's all that it's great it's amazing and you know there are people right now from some place who are listening to or viewing this webcast and they're thinking well yeah but this is one of those Texas high school bands you know they work on one piece all year long and you know that's all they do and, but that's not the case, as you guys can tell them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not only did you have a fantastically active marching band season, uh, but then, and now you're getting this concert ready for next week, right? It's in a week. Yeah, you guys are playing it at the TMEA convention. And you're, this, isn't, this isn't like this is the only piece on the program. And then you're going to turn around and you're going to do other music, you know, at your other fa That's why I love this program so much, because it's not that stereotypical, you know, we're going to beat these pieces to death and then we're going to, you know, then that's it. And then we start working on next year's marching band show. That's not the way it works around here. So it's, it's really extraordinary what Mr. Howard and crew uh, do with you guys. It's an, and the fact that you guys... It's clear that you love doing this. I mean, how could you not like this piece anyway? You know, really? I mean, seriously. If, is there anyone who doesn't like this piece? We'll, we'll put you on national television now. Do you, do you not like this piece? <laughs> I, I can't imagine that that would be the case with the enthusiasm with which you're playing it. Um, but I'll just say a couple of things that probably others have said to you about performing at TMEA. It can be for your director 
for your conductor a high stress situation uh, just because you know it's all of his peers who are sitting out there but the great thing about Mr. Howard is he's kind of a chill guy, you know, about a lot of things. <laughs> and so he's just there for you guys and to have you have a great experience with it. And it is, you're, I'll, I'll just tell you, as much as you're prepared to play the music, you're not prepared for the whole scene there, you know, and how ready everyone is going to be to hear you play, not just your fans who are there, but I mean all these music educators and other students, it, it's going to be an extraordinary opportunity. So the thing about it is it's not, it's just a celebration. It's not a, it's not a time to get all nervous, you know, and all that. So you just play. Just do, you've done this so much and you do it so well, you just play. Just play the way you enjoy it. And the other thing is in that hall with a shell, it's much better than it was for a number of years when they didn't have the shell in it. But it's still, there are oddities about playing in that hall, about the way the percussion sounds, about the, you know certain things, the way they come out that you don't hear on stage, but you hear them in the hall. You just can't think about any of that. And you, what you don't want to do is push your sound in that room. You just play the way you play. So don't anybody try to be a hero. Don't try to save the situation because it's, it's interesting. What you get in that hall is if you play something that has some projection to it, you get an immediate slap back off of there's a wall that's at the back of the lowest level and so you'll play something you'll zack them and you hear it come back to you but when you're playing quiet music you don't hear that but but people on stage you can hear you can hear each other so it's a really it's now it's a very good place to play but what you don't want to do is get affected by anything that you hear any distraction you just play just play the way that you've been so beautifully prepared and when in doubt, just rely on your instincts, you know, because you you've all have, at this point, well-developed instincts. Trombones, a little more glissando at 766, just like at the beginning. So all these places that come back at the end, you just do the same thing at the end of the piece as you did at the beginning of the piece. And, and then it makes perfect sense. This piece makes, in some ways, no sense. From a formal standpoint, it's like, it's what is this? As someone once told me, it's just a big old tapeworm of a piece. But yet it works. Somehow it absolutely works. Many years ago we played this with the Dallas Winds at an American Bandmasters Association convention and Francis Macbeth, the composer, was there. And he had told me before and he said, I, I've never heard this piece. And so I told him about it. I said the ending, I was telling him the story about the ending. I said it definitely has a big ending. As a matter of fact, it may have more than one. And uh, after the concert, I remember he said, you know, you were right about that. I think I counted three endings. Um, and he said, you know, those things, I think if I were him, I would have saved at least one of those because those good endings are hard to come up with. So he was like, he took me at my word when I said I wanted a big ending because this is about, you know, as big as it gets. So anyway, you guys sound great. So I'm, thank you so much for having me I'll be a part of this. Professor John, thank you. Thank you. I can hardly wait to hear you guys in San Antonio, man. Thank it's going to be thank great. Thank you so much. Yeah, get well. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, great job this morning. I will. I will see you later on. <coughs> Brass players, pedal down a little bit before you leave, please. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. Absolutely. Amazing. Great sound. Fantastic.